Welcome to another edition of Time in the Kitchen. On today's program, we're going to be doing Polish food, something very near and dear to my heart because that's my heritage. And I'm excited because I love Polish food and I usually have to wait for the spring to go to the church fair and get my Polish plate, but Lee's gonna show me how to make it at home. So Pam, let's, let's get, get cooking. to do is we're going to make the filling for the pierogi because they have to cool down in the refrigerator. So what I did was is I took four russet potatoes, peeled them, chopped them up, and boiled them just like you would for mashed potatoes, and I put them in my mixer bowl here and to cool down a little bit. Um, I'll explain why we're using the mixer later. Okay, um, and right here I have one, um, one large onion finely chopped that I'm going to saute in one stick of butter until it's translucent. You don't right. want we just brown. want it soft. We do not want it browned. Yep. We just want the onion nice and soft and, it, and yeah. buttery. It sounds like a lot of butter, but it's going to be good. Well, butter makes everything better, you know, and it just makes this taste really wonderful. While Pam is doing that, I'm going to talk to you about the cheese we're going to use in this filling. Now, we're only making one type of filling today for our pierogi, but we could have made a lot of different types. A couple of weeks ago, we, we had a pierogi making class here, and Pam had made some cabbage, and we stuffed some cabbage ones, and they were excellent. You can make mushroom ones, you can take a leftover roast beef and make a filling. You can stuff anything into these, including fruit. The cheese I'm going to use today, it, it would be the typical Polish cheese that they would use, although some people use cheddar cheese or cottage cheese. We're using something called farmer's cheese, and this is the brand that I like, um, and this is the kind I like to use. It's a friendship brand, and it's a softer farmer's cheese. Actually, you can buy another kind of farmer's cheese. It's a much harder kind of farmer's cheese. It looks like a teardrop. You don't want that. That's too hard for this kind of a recipe. If you can't find farmer's cheese, you can use plain cottage cheese, and I would suggest that you just drain it overnight in a sieve to get most of the moisture out of it. You want it a little bit drier. Uh, farmer's cheese is nothing more than cottage cheese that has been drained. Um, so it's, it, it holds its shape and it's not liquidy like cottage cheese. If you use the cottage cheese, Lee, you'd want to make sure you use the full fat. You wouldn't do like a low fat cottage oh, cheese or... We're using what? a stick of butter! <laughs> Come on! We're not going to use low fat cheese. I want you to taste this. Okay. This actually is kind of low fat. I mean, really. I, yeah. I could make a meal on this. Mm. I absolutely love this cheese. It's very it's mild. Creamy. It's creamy. A little salty. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Not much, but like it. It's absolutely delicious. So now we've got our four potatoes in here. I'm going to add, this is one pound of farmer's cheese. Now, you don't have to do this on a mixer. You can do this in a regular bowl and just mash up your potatoes. We don't want to whip this mixture. We do not want it to be like whipped potatoes. We want to have a little little, little chunks in it, okay. you know, so that you can still see that it's potato and it, it's just better that way. But I like doing it on the mixer, it's easy. So okay. as soon as these onions are done, those are those are pretty good. You think a little yeah. longer or are we good? No, those are fine. Okay. We don't want to get the butter browned. Okay. So we're going to add all of that in here. Should I just put it right in? Oh yeah. Okay. Well that smells good just all on its own. What? Let's get all the butter out. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still some in there. And a few little residual onions. Whoa, that can is hot. That's a hot one. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to mix this around a little bit. We don't okay. want it to be. Oh, I hit the power <laughs> button. That's what happens when you do things backwards. <laughs> See, I, did, I thought it was going to come and get me. <laughs> no, that's like that's like the uh, blender when you get the top on and everything goes fine. All oh, right, boy, here we go. I'm gonna do this one. Oh, that smells great. Uh, a little bit more. That's about it. Okay. 
We don't want to, I'm going to turn it around this time. I don't want to have it <laughs> fighting me anymore. Okay. And so here is the mixture. And let me see, do we have a little bowl or something? Oh, okay. Hold on one sec. Mmm. Making all kinds of noise in the kitchen today. Oh, yum. Yeah, I have another taste. <laughs> so if the filling is good, the pierogi is going to be good. All right. Good. Okay. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to put this in a smaller bowl. I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap, and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. I don't want it to be warm. That butter was still warm. and Okay. It, it actually works better to stuff the pierogi dough when, it's, when this part is cold. You could do this. You could do this the day before. Okay. And actually, it freezes well, too. The, you freeze the mixture right as it is right now? Yeah. Okay. I put it in a Ziploc bag or whatever. All right. And how long would it be in the fridge? Um, to let it cool just, down. Just just oh. cool down. Half an hour. Half an Not hour. even. Okay. Not even. So. All right. Let me go put this in the fridge. And I'm going to clean up. Okay. And then we'll come back. We're going to start another recipe while this cools down. So we'll be right back. Excellent. While the pierogi filling is cooling in the refrigerator, we're going to start our dessert. We're going to make a Polish cheesecake. It's called Cernik. And it's very popular in, in Poland. And it's a much denser cheesecake than we're used to in this country. And it has a, um, a base, which is a, a, it's a dough. It's a dough. Okay. And then you pour the cheesecake on top of it. And then it has a lattice on the top. Oh, pretty. It's a very heavy cheesecake, but it's delicious. Oh, no, I so bet good. it is. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a quarter cup of soft butter. OK. Yeah, that's pretty soft. OK. You might want to keep that around. Sure. You might need the spatula. Get two egg yolks, which Pam has separated for us. And then we need one cup of sugar in our mixer. And then we're going to blend this around until it gets a little nice and fluffy. And once this gets to where we want it, we're going to add some baking powder. Okay. We're going to add almond and vanilla extract. We're going to add three quarter cup of milk, and then we're going to add three cups of flour. Okay. And it's going to make a nice stiff dough. And then we're going to press it in our pan. Let me tell you about our pan. This is a 10 by 14 inch pan, which I have greased and floured. And you can see, I've used this pan a lot. Yeah. You know, if you don't have this size pan, another pan most people do have is yeah. a 9 by 13. Now, the 9 by 13 will make a much higher cheesecake, obviously. You might have to bake it longer. I like it better in that pan. I get little pieces out of it. And yeah, it's really up to you, whatever you want. So. Yeah. Okay. Everybody has that kind of pan. Like Everybody sure. has one of yeah. those. This is this is pan is. I think it's older than I am. It was my mother's, but it, it works. You well. gotta stick with the pans that you love, you know. Okay. What we're gonna add now, pan, is two teaspoons of baking powder. Okay. Right in there while it's mixing. Two. Two. And okay. then one teaspoon each of pure vanilla and one teaspoon of pure almond. Actually, you might on the almond, you might want to do a half a teaspoon because that is a highly concentrated Ooh. almond oh, extract. Oh, wow. That is. Yeah, okay. that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a commercial a uh, almond extract. And, uh, mm, this, smells company, great. this company does absolutely wonderful extracts. They're not cheap, but... Oh, it's thick. Kind of. Yes. Wow. That's unusual. It smells good. Uh, Oh, wow. I love the smell of almond. Mm. Mm. This is going to be good. And then oh, one be teaspoon of the... the yeah, one teaspoon of the... Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to slow this, stop it down. I'm going to add the flour in parts. I'm going to start with one cup of flour. This is just regular all-purpose flour. It's not self-rising or anything like that. So we'll start with one. It does smell when it's that almond. So now, would this be um, a special Polish dessert that they would have at yes, you know, this Easter time? Easter or and Christmas. Christmas. This Easter. would be a very traditional. I mean, I think they make it all year round. But yeah. when you see all the stuff that goes into the filling and how much work goes into this cheesecake, it's not something you're going to throw together every week. Right. So it's, it's your special, you know, special. companies coming. Yeah. Right. Going to add half of the milk. That was three quarters of a cup of milk again. We'll add half of that. You can see it's already starting to make a dough. Yes, it is. But very sticky at this point. It does look sticky. Now we're going to add another cup of flour. There we go, another cup. 
And when I turn the mixture on, Pam, you want to add the rest of the milk? Sure. Right in there, just right in. And then once that's well combined, we'll add the last cup of flour. Okay. And then we're gonna we're gonna get our hands dirty. Oh, nice. <laughs> Excellent. I just do that to get the rest of the flour off the sides. Of it. I do have the spatula handy if you need it. Well, before I put the next flour in, you might scrape down okay. the sides a little bit. Just give that a scrape. Let me get rid of this shirt. We don't need that anymore. Well, that's so sticky. It's still sticky, but now we're going to add that last cup of flour. Okay. It's going to be slightly sticky, but it's not going to stick to your hands. Okay. And then there's our last of the flour. And then when we take this out, we're going to remove a little bit of the... Of the I learned this recipe from my sister-in-law, who's, who's really Polish. And she uh, said, will you take out some of the dough? I said, well, and put it aside for the lattice top. I said, well, how much? <laughs> so I kind of experimented with it and it's about a quarter. A quarter of the whole bowl of, of the dough. dough. Okay. Yeah. I, I just kind of eyeball it and then we're going to be doing little ropes later on. Oh nice. It's going to be a lot of fun. So this is oh, the... Oh we're going to need this. We're, we're going to need our hands. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is that when the dough is done we're going to press it down in the bottom as evenly as we can and slightly up the sides so it comes maybe halfway. Okay. So kind of like you do that with a with the regular cheesecake with the graham cracker crumb. You have it coming up the side a little bit of the pan. But so. when you think about this, we put baking powder in this dough. This dough is going to rise. Oh. And it's and even the lattice that we put on top is going to puff slightly because of the baking powder. So it's a lot different than um, graham crackers. Right. You right. Know? All right. Okay. You scrape that down. I'm going to get rid of this mixer for the moment. And I've got a little thing here that I'll put the little bit of dough in. Yep, yep. Oh, this is great. I love family recipes. I think they're so special. Oh, this isn't exactly a family. Well, it's her version of it. I did a little research on Cernik. It's S-E-R-N-I-K is, is the Polish uh, spelling of it. And I did. I went online on Google and I, I Googled Cernik and I looked at all these recipes. There were so many different versions. Hers is... Um, there's more savory ones, but this, it's very, very famous in Poland. So what we're going to do now is take out some of the dough. I'm eyeballing it here. Just put it aside in another bowl. You need a little bit more. Because like I said, this rises quite a bit. Okay, now I'm gonna plop it here and there. <laughs> We're gonna flour our hands. Oh yeah. It is sticky. It's sticky, yeah, it is. That's why you're gonna have to flour your oh, hands. Grab this flour. Oh, now we're playing. <laughs> well, this, this is the, actually the most time consuming part. Well, this in the lattice, but it is so worth it when you taste this. Cake I can't afterwards. wait. It is so worth it. You can start. So just start pressing. Just start pressing okay. it out to the sides. And what oh. you don't want to have is like one big lump in the middle. Gonna oh, you're flour. gonna need a lot of flour. You definitely will need floured hands. Okay. Let me just put that here. I want to get all of this out. I'm making a pile. That's what I'm gonna do. Cause all right, whatever well, makes you comfortable. You work on that side, and I'll work on this okay. side. It's better when you have four hands. It is. And I guess the first thing you want to do is just get it covered on the bottom, and then we can work it up the sides. And what I do is kind of go with my hand that way. My finger. oh, I see. I got gotcha. you. Okay. And just kind of bring it up. awesome. I like this. You know, you could get your girls involved in doing this sure. too. Sure. I'm sure they would do a, a fabulous job They would job do a good this. job. Right, can I spin a little? Sure. I just want to get into that corner. and You're faster than I am. Oh, it's this... like you've done this before. Kind of feels like pizza dough. I mean, a little bit. It's yeah, stickier. A but... little. It's not as elastic. That's the difference. I think it feels wonderful. It does. It's nice and smooth. It does. It's wonderful. And just make sure you, like I'm getting here in the corner. Oh, I got, I, I got it yeah. really thick. 
So you don't want to get it that thick in that corner. No. Okay. okay. How am I? You're doing well. Do you are doing well. Usually when I do this by myself, um, it takes me so long. But like I said, you yeah. Once you get this more going, hands. and then once we have this done, what's happening with this next? Well, we're gonna put this aside, and then we're gonna make the filling. And the okay. filling's got it's got more farmer's cheese in it. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a very popular cheese in, in the old country. It's a, I guess that's why they call it farmer's cheese. It was probably something that every farm house made their own. Everybody has, yeah. You know, they had the cows and they got the milk. And... Okay. So this is a real hearty, I can tell that this is going to be a this real is hearty a, dessert like. This is not, yeah, this is a heavy cheesecake is what, is exactly what I'm saying. It's not like the light ones. It's much heavier than an American cheesecake. Although I think the closest would be what they call the New York style cheesecake, which okay. is a heavy cheesecake. Yep. So that's pretty good. All right. That looks that looks nice, pretty good. Even. All right. So Pam and I are gonna go wash our hands, and we're gonna get all the ingredients, and we're gonna come back and show you how to make the filling. Excellent. We're now gonna make the filling for our Polish cheesecake. Okay. There's a lot of stuff that goes in here. We've got 16 ounces of sour cream, 16 ounces of cottage cheese another 16 ounces of farmer's cheese, eight ounces of cream cheese. We've got the zest of one whole lemon, four eggs that we've separated, and we're only gonna use the yolks at this point. We're gonna add the whites later. Okay. We've got some cornstarch as a thickener yep. and some vanilla for more flavor. Okay. So we are going to just dump all this stuff in Everything here. Right. This is yep. a lot of cheese. This is a lot of cheese. So all of this in each yep. container. Yep. Okay. Just I dump love, it in there. Love cottage cheese. Well, I love cottage cheese, but I like farmer's cheese better. It's a drier, like we talked about before, yes. it's a drier cottage cheese. And I could just sit there and eat the whole thing. Well, this is going to be a great way for people to get familiar with it, too, because I really haven't heard of farmer's cheese. or. Um, I have no problem finding it at Big Y. Okay. I have had a lot of problems finding it anywhere else. Really? And it seems to be a seasonal kind of thing. At this time of year, we're we're taping this in late March, and we're, we're just before Easter, and... Uh, it's very easy to find. If you can't find it, like I said, you could substitute again regular cottage cheese that you drained overnight. Try to get as much of the water out of it as possible. Okay, so there are all our cheeses. Now we're going to put in the four egg yolks and okay. zest of one lemon. Four egg yolks, and we go. That one didn't come out very nice, did it? Yeah, it's okay. That's all right. Um, give me the dirties, and I'm going to take them over there because I'm going to wash my hands. Okay, and then the whole zest of the lemon. So whole, zest the whole lemon. So I have a zester here, and then how, what I do is you just keep it moving along, and you just kind of grate it. Yeah, it's one of the best tools in the kitchen. And as long as you don't get the white pith into it, you're doing fine. But there's nothing better than fresh zest. I mean, smell it. You get all the essential oils from the oh. lemon. And we're That's not going to throw the lemon away, I promise you. I'm going to, I'm going to juice the lemon later, and I save the lemon juice for when I'm making lemon tarts for the store. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah you, you wouldn't throw away the lemon just because mm -mm. you're taking its skin off. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Poor lemon. Okay, I think, I don't know. How's that? Looks good. Yeah? Tap off your zester, and let's get the, the four tablespoons, mm. tablespoons oh. of cornstarch. There's a lot of cheese in here, so there's a lot of cornstarch involved. Four tablespoons. Four tablespoons. Okay. Now, what does the cornstarch do exactly it, in here? It thickens it up. Oh, okay. It's a binder. You have to have something to do that. And we're not done yet. We still have a lot more things to add to this, but we're going to blend this up and get it smooth before we start adding the okay. sugar. Oh, okay. And then we're going to... Okay, there's four. Okay. Okay, and... and about a teaspoon of vanilla. A teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. Mmm. I can't wait to try this. Whoops. It's, a it's gonna bake food. a long time. This is gonna bake in a 375 degree oven for almost an hour or so. Oh, an hour. Yeah. And so, well, let me see. Tell, hey, tell me to my... the... hang on. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're gonna bake it for an hour and then we're gonna bake it 10 minutes. We're gonna take it out. We're gonna put cherries on top of it and then we're gonna bake it for 40 to 50 minutes more. So, oh, wow. an hour in total. Okay. So now we're gonna blend this. Now, while I'm doing this, Pam, we need the four egg whites. Okay. And we want those whipped up. Now, we don't want them stiff peaks, but we want soft peaks. So, this so we're going to use the gadget. The old fashioned egg beater. You could use a wire whisk if you want to. You could use, you know, a regular mixer. Let's put this 
underneath, you won't be riding on. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. And the loss of the to add. It's wonderful, yeah. I love it. I like the sound that it makes. It's very effective, too. It is. It's a very effective tool. That's why, you know, for so many years it was in every woman's kitchen. Yeah. Or in every kitchen, I shouldn't say that. And no electricity. And no Even electricity. Better. And you get a workout. Yeah. <laughs> My wrist will be tiny after this. <laughs> yeah, good deal. Okay, so we're going to add half a cup of sugar. Okay. There's one quarter. There's a half. Mm. And then when How the egg whites are done, we're going to fold them into the cheese. Oh, That's okay. going to lighten it up a yep. little bit. And then we're going to pour it into the crust, and then we're going to go back to the table and play with the dough and make oh, fun! This is fun. Oh, I can just imagine, there. like, ladies in Poland, like the grandmas and everything, like, you know, just gathering with some coffee and baking this up and and then eating it. And I was calling this Cerna before, and I've been corrected by my husband. It's Serna. Serna meaning cheese in Polish. Okay. Well, that sounds fancy. Yeah. I also heard it called Sarobiec, and I guess that's sort of a, a cuter name for it. But yeah. It's still spelled S-E-R-N-I-K. Kind of like tomato tomato, huh? Exactly. <laughs> I think we're about there. Are we good? Yeah. Oh, this is fun. So you can see, it's not stiff peaks, but it's it's soft peaks. Okay. All right. Let's get this on. Get as much of the cheese off of here oh, as we can. Oh, absolutely. Because this is good stuff. Not leave any of that behind. And the zest. Oh, can you smell uh, that? It just lemon? smells so good. And I can still smell the almond extract in the dough. You know, that's mm -hmm. still coming through with the lemon. And, and I'll tell you, when you eat this later on, you are gonna the I never could put my finger in it, but it's the almond I always tasted. Mm. And it's without the almond, mm. I don't think it would be nearly as good. No. no. It's amazing. Little would you like to fold? Different. Sure. Okay. Hold on. Let me just get rid of this. Okay. Take this off for you. Okay. Now put all your whites in. All, all at once, yep. okay. And now you don't want to go like this and beat them up. You want to fold because you want okay. as much of the air that Pam has already whipped into the whites to stay in there and lighten this up. And go all the way to the bottom if you can. Okay, so up and over and up, up and, and over. Center, down the center, yep, sides, clean them off. Okay. Yeah, you'd hate to deflate these, that's not. Right, but you do have to get the whites really incorporated. You can't have plops of it. It's It's got to get in there. Okay. Because you'll have pockets of it, and it'll get runny, and it won't be Ooh, good. No, we don't want that. Yeah, so you really want this to okay. get in there. It's very light now. Yes. And I still see, it's okay, I see lumps from the cottage cheese. That's perfectly That's good to go. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. You won't even notice those later on. Nice. Oh, it just, it smells so nice. It does. It does. I bet you wish you were coming over our house. <laughs> <laughs> How's this looking? Yeah, you think I'm see. there? Let me, let me do a test. Yeah, we're about there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Plop, plop. Plop, plop, I know. <laughs> All right, this is a heavy bowl, so I'll tell do you what. You want me to I'll hold, hold the bowl and you scoop. How's okay. that? Okay. All right. All right, scooping away. Not only is it a heavy bowl, it's a big bowl. It's a big bowl, yeah. This is a, um, a bigger capacity mixer. But if you have a regular, I mean, this you is can do it in your regular. regular you can, okay. Yeah, it'll fit in your regular mixer. I just have two mixers, and I happen to use this one today. Okay. I usually I'll, use the kitchen. I can scrape that a little better. Yeah. Let's get it all out. All right. And then we're gonna we're gonna put this aside, and we're gonna get some flour. And we're gonna start rolling that other dough out and making little lattice. Oh, that's gonna be so pretty. And my oven is preheating to 375. As okay. I said. And then while we put it, when we put it in the oven, we'll get the cherries ready. Um, I'm not really sure why. You bake it for 10 minutes. You take it out. You put the cherries on. And then you put it back in for another 40 to 50 minutes. Hmm. Don't know why. But you know what? Don't mess with it. Don't mess <laughs> Just with it. Just do it. It's, <laughs> my, it's the way my sister-in-law told me to do it, and that's the way I'm going to do it. Okay. So, 
Give us about two seconds while we clean up the decks a little bit, get the flour and the rest of the dough, and we'll come back and we'll start making the ropes. Yeah. Well, Pam, here's that leftover dough, and let's hope we have enough. We're going to try to make a lattice. This is not the easiest for me. I'm, it's not hard, but yeah, you'll see what I mean. The dough is very delicate. I think that's probably way too much flour. But yeah, we'll put some more to the side here. But you know, you can pinch it together. Let's start off okay. with a piece. We're gonna make ropes. Ropes, okay. Just make a long rope. And we're gonna try to make a little bit of a lattice on top. We'll make a nice big X first. This will be too much for one rope, but we gotta make it thin because we gotta make the lattice stretch out. Oh, okay, okay. But you know, the good thing is, is once you cut the cheesecake, if you didn't do the lattice very well, it doesn't show up. Oh, well, I if you bring you. the whole thing to the table. Well, yeah, I think you're going to want to bring this all to the table. This is going to be... All right, you're better with the... How are you getting it to roll? You can't get it to... You got too much flour. Oh. Okay. And don't press down. You're, all you're doing is pushing. See, I'm just pushing it along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay. Set up with a cigar. If you make too many... Yeah, we got too much flour. If you make too many dents in it, it's yep. not gonna roll. It's you like a flat tire. <laughs> it's like a flat tire, right? <laughs> I'm right. So we wanna just keep it going. Oh, I see. Oh, once you get the movement, I right. Okay. It's a, it's a movement thing. All right. And oh, no. transferring this over there is a trick too. But you know what? Once it's on there, you can kind of pinch it together and. Can you can you go like that? Sure. That's, All right. so that's what helps you get it might started. Be, I might be better. I'm going to actually break Whoa, off pieces. Or maybe not so much. Okay. Okay. I see. Oh, I'm, I'm having like flashbacks of bread <laughs> baking now all of a sudden. <laughs> bread baking is hard work. Come it on. It is. You know. I, I mean, know. Believe me, I know. That, uh, now my, all that kneading, boy, you got to have muscles for oh. that. <laughs> all right. I'm going right. to see what I mean, how it breaks. Playing with Play-Doh well, obviously wasn't one of my strong points as a child. I'll try. Oh, wait a minute. It's coming together now. Right? There. Oh, oh, that looks great. Okay. Yep. And now we'll make another X and then we'll make little ones in between. The little ones are easier. Okay. I might be on the little ones. <laughs> you want to do the little ones and I'll do the big ones? <laughs> I think so. You're doing fine, but I you got to get it a lot thinner. A snake bit. You know like what? Yeah, work with less. Ran yeah. across the podunk. <laughs> See, you get that, that end's too flat. It's not going to roll if it's flat. Right. Okay. You know what? I'm I've done this a few times. I'm going to work with what's working here. Work with a smaller piece and do what I didn't just do, the patch job. Okay. Remember from the Valentine's Day program? Yes. You called me, you said I was doing a patch job on the Beef Wellington. Well, that's yeah. what we're doing here. Okay. So, you know, in, in, in this Good. is you like got a it. rustic you got kind it. of just, thing. You know. just, give us, just give us the X that way now. Okay. And if it falls apart, fine. Just patch it up. Oh, come on, baby. Oh. Mm. You won't need it all, so. Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh. Here you go. You're okay. done. Don't, don't, don't bother with the middle. Okay. Now start making smaller ones, and we're going to start going this way a couple times, and then that way a couple okay. times. This is really fun, though, Lee. See? You get the girls to do this one. Yeah, this is a kid thing for sure. Well, it could be. It's a little bit therapeutic. It is, and yours are perfectly... I've done this a couple times. Yeah, I bet you have. <laughs> There's another one. Oh, I've seen. Okay. So you, you mean then we'll do another one, another one, and then we'll do a couple this way and we'll be all done? Okay. I'm coming. It's... Take your time. Don't. Don't. Well, do I need help? Is this long, long enough? Or you need a little longer? Or? Get a little skinnier over here. Don't forget, we got to stretch this dough out quite a bit. Okay. I still have a big hunk over here. Oh, so do you? We, oh, we, have, we still have approximately that much. Oh, okay. Nice. So we got, we've got enough. And once you get your, your hands floured, it becomes a little bit easier. Okay. All right. I'm going to send you home with a can of Play-Doh. You're oh, going to have to practice I'm lattice. I'm going to have to do something. I need one of those Play-Doh machines where you just press the handle and it comes out like a little ribbon. Wouldn't that be nice if you had a little extruder and we could just put the dough in? Yeah. Oh, that's sort that's of like what we're going to do with the pierogi oh. in a little while. This is a lot of hands-on food, like good handcrafted yeah. food. I'm 
I've abandoned these. They're, they're waiting. What, are you afraid to put them on? Um, well, it's not exactly yeah. round. Yeah, let me see. It's not bad. No. Don't forget, these are going to puff up in the oven. This You're is not true. See. This is true. You're not going to see every little detail. They're going to puff. Okay. There you go. Okay, I think I'm... Now get us... You can probably use this one right here. Let's just get a little bit more shape to it. Okay, look at that. That looks pretty. Now we're going to do a now few that way. Now we're doing the other Okay. And then what we're going to do with the cherries, we have maraschino cherries, which uh, Pam has taken out of the liquid, and, and we're draining them on paper towels. And we're going to cut the cherries in half. And after this has been in the oven for 10 minutes, we'll take it out, and we'll put a cherry at every intersection. Oh. And it just... That's going to be pretty. It, it looks really pretty, and it actually tastes really good later on, too. Oh, Lord. <laughs> How about you? You want to go cut the cherries? You know what? I, I, you know, yes, I will, I'll be on the cherries. That, I, I can You know what? If you, didn't, if you didn't do this, you could have just, you know, plopped pieces here and there on it, too. Oh, it wouldn't look as nice. It wouldn't look as nice, but you know what? The taste would still be there. Yeah, you're right. So I'm just going to cut these cherries in half. Yeah, I'm guessing we probably are going right. to need... Oh... 10 cherries cut in half, maybe. You'll just have to wait until I finish with the lattice and then count the intersections. <laughs> okay, I'll get cutting now. So, there's one. Yeah, you do make that look easy, but it is easy. I've made a lot of this over the years. I can't wait. <laughs> I can still smell the almond. I do. I it's can just, too. it's so, it's so nice. I, I just love almond. Now that extract um, you said was super concentrated, right? Yes. Um, if you can't find that in the supermarket, would you add a little more of the regular almond extract? Um, or keep it the same? I would keep it at one teaspoon. Don't forget, we, we did a half a teaspoon where the recipe calls for a oh, teaspoon. Oh, this is true. Okay, yeah. So we used less. So just use your teaspoon of regular. Almond extract, even in the supermarket, tends to be fairly one of the more inexpensive extracts. Okay. It's not as expensive. Um, a few years ago, Sylvia and I took a, a day trip out to Western Mass. Um, I don't remember the, the name of the town, but you could Google it to Baldwin and Son. And Baldwin and Son is one of the oldest extract companies still operating in the United States. Really? And it's like in this old building, and we walk in there, and it's like a little old country store. It's old, oh. old. And then in the background behind the counter, which is in a little wooden counter with a funny looking little old fashioned cash oh, register, neat. were these big copper kettles that look like giant teapots or something like that and they were brewing them in there oh, wow. and you could go there and we bought we bought vanilla which was expensive but you know it was it was really good vanilla and uh, they would sell you the vanilla beans if you wanted them and they also would we bought I bought a, I think a quart of pure almond extract oh. a quart which is as big as that yep. thing and I think it was like $17 Oh, that's not. That's a quart. That's a that's lot. That's a quart, and that's that a was lot of extract. pure extract. Wow. Now, is this place you can open to the public? You yep. can go in there. Yep. It's an absolutely a quaint little town. It is so pretty. You can go there, and they have these little um, sidewalk cafes. I mean, it's really so that New would England. Be a it's, real fun outing. It was a wonderful outing. Oh, it's it's very close to the New York border, though, so it's a it's a haul out there. Yeah. But it is definitely worth going there and the name of the company like you said you could google it was baldwin baldwin and, and son and like i said they're one of the oldest um continually producing extra companies in the united states and it's a cute country store they have the other stuff they had in, in the store was remember the old penny candies from when you oh, were a yeah. kid yeah they had all those old oh, penny that's great. candies that's great and they had little little um rag dolls and 
very old fashioned kind of stuff in the store. Oh, it how was fun would that be? It was it was very nice. And we found a little little pastry shop around the corner that we sat under Aww. outside and had had a little French pastry with a nice cup of coffee and it was a nice day. Yeah. Very nice day. All right. Now what you're gonna have to count here, Pam, are all the intersections. Okay. I'm gonna fix that middle a little bit. And I look, I even have a piece of you, dough left. Too. I'm not gonna do any more. No, okay. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 20, Add three, a few extras, little cats on the edges. So okay. Cut up about 12 or 13 of them. Yeah, that. okay, so I've got mm -hmm. like a whole bunch here. All I've right. Already cut up, so. I'm gonna clean my hands okay. and we're going to put this in the oven for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we're gonna put the cherries on. We'll show you how to do that. So we'll Excellent. be right back. Lee is bringing the cheesecake out of the oven and she's coming with it and we're going to then um, adorn it with the cherries. See how they puffed? Oh yeah, I get it now. Okay, that is so nice now we're puffy. just going to grab some cherries and just put them here and there. Usually, yeah, the nice side up. My oven is yelling at me. Oh, this is, I see how it's all nice and puffy and oh, this is gorgeous. Yeah, and then after it's been in the oven for another 40 to 50 minutes, it's going to get nice and golden and Excuse wonderful. <laughs> oh, it, oh. And tasty. You have to try this recipe. This is just so beautiful. It, it is not the easiest recipe in the world. As you saw, it, it takes a lot of steps. Well, you know, most but, baking does. I mean, mm, let's yes see. And no. Uh, I need one here. Are we good? Um, did we miss any? Let's stick one over there. One little guy over yeah, here. Yeah, all right. That's kind of a wimpy one. All right, nice. well, I'm okay. going to go put this in the oven, and Pam's going to start the next recipe. Excellent. I'll take care of the cherries in a minute, Pam. Bye-bye, little cheesecake. <laughs> okay, what I am going to be making, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, uh, Lee gave me this recipe, and I tried it. At, she mentioned it to me. We were just chatting. And I went, I had to go home and make it that night. I mean, it just, I was like, I have to make this. So basically it's cabbage. Um, capusta. Oh, it's capusta. Did I say that right? Sure. Okay, capusta. So, um, not bad. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the linguist like give me a rating. Um, it's cabbage that is slow cooked, I, I guess, you know, simmered away. And what I have going here, you need a really big pot for this, okay? Because it's going to cook down, but until it does, you need a lot of area. So what I have in this pot right here are, let me see, four of the country-style um, pork ribs. And these happen to be boneless, although when I did make it at home, I, I used the ones with the bone in, and then I just took the bones out. Because what's going to happen is this cooks so long that um, the meat just falls oh, off just, the bone. It just falls apart. So I have a little, I added a little olive oil in here and I put a nice amount of salt and pepper on the ribs. So I'm going to get ready to turn them in a second. I'll see if they're ready to turn. Um, yep. Yeah. And in the meantime, before Pam started browning this, she took a head of cabbage. That big? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have another one I can show, yeah. And then just finely shredded it like this. And it looks like a lot, but again, you know cabbage is going to cook down. Yeah. Right, so um, I have this. I'm going to give the pork a little bit longer to brown. And this, this was the size of the cabbage, so right. I might just cut that up and add that to the pot. But I do need to cut up an onion, and onion goes in. Okay, here's your board. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, so this was just absolutely delicious. So you have the pork ribs in there, okay? Um, and then towards the end of the cooking time, we're going to add more pork in the form of kielbasa that's all chopped up. I mean, it's just like pork and cabbage. I mean, really. Yeah, it's, How, it's, it's a one pot <laughs> meal, and it's, it's this is great in the winter. It's yeah. so hearty. And Oh, and a lot of people delicious. say, oh, I don't like cabbage. Well, oh, it doesn't even, you know what? It doesn't even, it, it does t not even taste anything like the uncooked form, I right. don't think. Right, I mean, you're, you're going to cook it so long, you're not going to get that no. stinky smell. 
smell. It's, no. It's going to be nice. Oh, it's, it's yeah, nice. it's not anything like that. Oh, and then at the very end as well, when we add the um, kielbasa, we're going to add one can of sauerkraut that's drained. And I don't know what that does. It just makes it It adds wonderful. a little bit of um, tart t uh, flavor to it. But you don't, you want the small can. You don't want to get that big can of, of uh, sauerkraut because it will overpower the taste of the cabbage. This is just going to add that little bit of tang. Yeah, the little soup can size. Right. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, this is a no-brainer. I mean, I, I didn't even follow a recipe when I put this together. I just remembered what Lee told me and yeah, this I went really, off and running. There's no measurements, really. Um, and if at the end, if your cabbage is very watery, because you don't know what each cabbage is going to be like until you, until you cook it. Yeah, that's true. Some are more watery than others. And you want it a little bit thicker. You can make um, a flour um, chicken stock uh, paste and whisk it into the cabbage later on to kind of thicken it up. Nice. But, you know, it depends on how okay. you like it. Some people like it very thin. So, and I go with the onion. You know, and I just, you saw that onion. That was just like a medium mm -hmm. to large onion. I wasn't yep. even gonna worry about it. About the size of a small baseball. Baseball yeah. Baseball size. So, oh, the pork smells so good in there. And, and the onions smell pretty good too. <laughs> I'm gonna put this in, and then I'm gonna give it a stir. And like I said, I'm probably gonna just chop up this other cabbage and put that in too, just because. I'll clean up your outer leaves for you. Um, and this is going to cook down tremendously. And I don't remember if we said this or not, but when I made um, my batch of the kapusta, I added some chicken stock in there. So I'm just using a really good um, chicken stock if you have homemade, super for you. But I don't, so I don't know. I'm just and again, there's no eyeballing this. Right. I'm just kind of going. If you don't have chicken stock and you have, you can use vegetable stock or you can use just water if that's yeah. all you have. Yeah, but the chicken, the chicken stock makes yeah, it's a good lot more flavor. flavor so with this cabbage, oh, this one isn't as tough as the first one. How I do it is I just slice it in half, and you'll see that there's this core in here, and you don't want to eat that. I mean, it's tough. You know, my it's, husband used to like to eat that. No. Okay, so maybe if you're <laughs> one of those special people, you do want to have the core, but like for all the rest of us, thing. like just eat it like raw, raw. It's okay. delicious. Please don't throw it away. I'm going to give oh. Casey the core. <laughs> I, hear, I hear him calling. All right, we'll Here. save you. <laughs> Enjoy that. So I just cut it. You can see the core in here. So if you just make a sideways cut like that, it's gone. And we will save them. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then you just want to slice this as thin as you can. Waste not, want not. Yeah. Um, this is true. This is true. And here I was like dissing the core, but you know. I, I've never tried it myself. <laughs> Would you like to try uh, one no, now? Um, not really. No? No. And I, I like cabbage. I mean, I love coleslaw. I love, you know, stuffed cabbage. Oh, and, yes. Yeah, you know. we were talking about that too. What is the Polish stuffed cabbage? It's called what? Golumki. Golumki. Oh. The, oh. the L in Polish on Gawunki is has a little line through it, and that signifies the pronunciation of a W sound. So it's oh. not Gawunki, it's Gawunki. Gawunki. Oh, that's neat. I didn't know that. I just know that I like it. Okay. What's not to like? Stuffed I know. Cabbage. Hmm. My mother and her stuffed cabbage, after she stuffed them, some people put tomato sauce on them. Oh, yeah, yeah. My mother used to render down some lard and pour it on top. No! Really? Just a little bit. Oh, I bet well, that was... Well, you could do bacon. Okay, yep. Bacon. Oh, I bet that was good, though. Mm -hmm. So here, once again... Oh, not lard. Uh, the pork fat. Oh, oh, um, salt pork. Salt pork. That's salt what I pork. Meant. She used to oh, cut even it. better. She used to dice up the salt yep. pork into tiny little pieces. She'd put it in a frying pan until the until the, the meaty parts got crisp. And yep. then she would pour that over the gawumki. Oh, now that sounds good. Oh, well, that's yes. like the French call those like lardons. 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 Right. Yeah, we use that for something. And we, we made, you yes, made, you I, made those. For, I made those for the uh, Coco Van in our last program. That's right. I'm paying attention, believe it or not. Okay, so this is going to go in, and then basically, um, so what's in there is the chicken stock, the two heads of cabbage, the one onion, and the um, pork ribs, and then 
And I'm going to stick a it, lid on this. This is a very economical dish. Oh, yeah. And I mean, this feeds an cabbage army. Cabbage right now is very, what is this, like 17 cents a pound? Or you can find it nine cents a pound someplace Cheap. right after St. Patrick's Day. Yep. And Cheap. country style spare ribs, be they on the bone or off the bone, you can buy those in any supermarket. They're very inexpensive and they're very tasty. And a lot of times you can buy one and get two free. Yeah. Put I, them in the freezer, you've got two more batches of cabbage. I bought a family pack of the. Um, Spare ribs, uh, they were huge and it was five something dollars. So, yeah. So, what I'm going to do now is put a cover on this and then this is going to just simmer away. And I don't know, Lee, like I simmer it for hours. It, it's better the longer you cook it. So, if you make this like in the morning, uh, and actually, I think it's better the second day. I do too. I do too. Put it in the refrigerator and let it just marry the flavors. Pull it out, warm it up. And not that it's not good the first day, it's very it's good. good. But yeah, this would be the kind of thing if you were thinking ahead, make it the afternoon or the evening before and then just have the pot going and yeah. And then after you add the kielbasa, which is already cooked, so you're just adding that in when it's warmed up. Right. That just yep. knocks it over the top. And we will show you as we add it, we do have one finished already that we'll show you and it's delicious. So, so while this is cooking down, which is going to be a couple hours, we're going to start making pierogi. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay. 